Hello everybody, and in this video uh, we're going to be evaluating this uh, this integral. Um, so uh, we got we got lots of trig functions in here, and uh, you know at first maybe substitution. I'm trying to think like what would what would get this problem to to go, you know. Well, one thing that's always nice when when we have Sort of integrals that are from zero to pi over two, right? Or in general, if you have a zero, if you have an integral from a to b, the substitution of x is equal to a plus b minus t is always nice because uh, it it can often induce some some symmetry pro properties, right? So if let, let's just think if we if because because the if you plug in a plus b minus t that substitution doesn't change the bounds because you get it you basically get a negative but then it's from b to a so then you can use that negative to flip it so you're basically just plugging in a plus b minus t wherever you see an x um, and so for our case if we plug in pi over 2 minus t everywhere we see right then for trig functions specifically for sine and cosine that just swaps it, right? Sine of pi over 2 minus t is equal to cosine of t. Um, and, and so what's nice for us is that that means our denominator doesn't change, right? Our denominator, if we plug in x is equal to pi over 2 minus t, does not change because the sine switches to a cosine and the cosine switches to a sine, but they're both, they both have magnitude 2, so it doesn't affect the, pro the denominator. But the numerator will become well, the sine switches to a cosine, so our new denominator will be cosine squared of x. Well, if we have two fractions with the same denominator, and 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 in trig or in a sort of manipulating trig functions, we often like to add cosine squared and sine squared because that's just equal to one. And and so we're adding, we're basically we'd be adding the same integral because the denominator doesn't change, the bounds don't change. So what I'm claiming is that this is equal to one half, and instead of a trig function in the in the numerator, we just have, and uh, so so instead of a sine squared, we we basically we take the integral, we do a substitution, and then we add it together with itself. So that's where the one half comes from, and then instead of we just have sine squared plus cosine squared, which is one, right? So now we have a, a more simplified integral, but the denominator is still nothing that that seems um, standard, right? Well, there's a substitution which um, I'm not going to pronounce, but but basically the idea is that you let t equal to tangent of x over two because then each of dx, sine over x, and cosine over x will have um, out, uh, like rational forms. So I'll write that out here. And so, so dx is equal to 2 over 1 plus t squared, dt. Sine of x is equal to 2t over 1 plus t squared. And cosine of x is equal to 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. And proving this is all a matter of trig manipulations, right? But we're, we're letting t equal to tangent of x over 2. So our bounds, right, so the lower bound for t, if x is equal to 0, then we're taking the tangent of 0, which is 0. And uh, the, the upper bound will be tangent of pi over 2 over 2, which is pi over 4, and tangent of pi over 4 is just 1. So our new integral is from 0 to 1. And this 1 half will cancel with the 2 that we get from our, uh, our d dt. And another nice thing is that is that we all everything has the same denominator. Now, it would be extra nice if if this constant wasn't here because if we clear out the denominators, we're going to have a three one plus t squared. But it ends up being okay. So basically, if we plug all this information in, right? So we get a zero to one. And I'm I'm, I'm claiming that the this one half I'm just going to cancel out with the the 2, and then I'm going to multiply everything by 1 plus t squared. So we get the integral from 0 to 1, uh, 3 times 1 plus t squared, so that's 
when we clear the denominators, this 3 gets multiplied by 1 plus t squared. And then we have 2, so I basically factor it out 2, and then here I just have the numerator for sine and the numerator for cosine. Um, and so and so now, uh, this this looks kind of bad, but, but after simplifying, what we get is dt over t squared plus 4t plus 5. And uh, and I some of the this might not be obvious to most of you, but we can let five equal to four plus one, and then here we have a a squared binomial, right? This is t plus two squared, and so we can use that to our advantage, right? Because now we basically have something over the form of one over x squared plus one, and we know that's the arc tangent. So this is going to evaluate to the inverse tangent of t plus 2 evaluated from 1 to 0. And of course, that's just tang the inverse tangent of 3 minus the inverse tangent of 2. So let's find out what that is. And so basically, we can evaluate this as if we were taking the tangent of it, right? So, so let's just say we have an imaginary, and I'll I'll switch colors here. So let's say we have the tangent of this, right? Then, then we could just take, we can do what uh, the tangent subtraction formula, right? Which is tangent of a minus b is equal to tangent of a minus tangent of b over one plus tangent of a times tangent of b. But here, since our a's and b's are inverse tangents, those tangents of a tangent of a and tangent of b's just uh, evaluate to whatever we have here, right? So what we would get is is 3 minus 2 over 1 plus 3 times 2. And so then we have to take the inverse tangent on both sides. Um, so, so this just evaluates to 1 over 7, right? So our answer here is that this must be the inverse tangent of 1 over 7, which is the final answer, right? This is what our integral has evaluated to. Um, yeah, so that's it. Just, I guess the only thing here, just to review, um, getting rid of this sine squared, I, I think it is possible to, to do this like just this substitution right from the beginning, but it's much nicer to notice that we have that symmetry with the bounds to get rid of this nastier term because we would have had to multiply by one over or like one plus t squared squared, right? Because we would have had an extra factor. And so it just would have been a whole lot messier, but thankfully, so, so basically three main things, right? Exploiting symmetry, uh, especially with with bounds and with trig functions, uh, and then this substitution, which um, it's accredited to this guy, which, which you know I can't pronounce, but uh, <laughs> I have videos on on other stuff he's done with the gamma function. I I I, I don't even want to try. Um, but yes, this the, uh, the tangent tangent of x over two is a common substitution because. It turns trig functions into rational functions, right? And and in our case, that made this a whole lot easier to integrate, right? We just get tan inverse of t plus two, right? Because really, if you think about it, this is tan in tangent inverse of tangent of x over two plus two, and that that would have been harder to realize just from here. So anyway, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my other videos.